Hey there, today I have an episode of the top 30, which is hands down the best 30 minutes that you can spend out of your comic book day. And the only reason that it, it will be the best 30 minutes is because I have another awesome, and wonderful and engaging and entertaining guest. So let's welcome him. It is Michael from Wahoo Comics. How you doing, Michael? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you for being here. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I've uh, I, I've been watching your channel for some time now, and when I reached out to you to be a guest on the top thirty, I was super excited because I feel like we have a lot of uh, similar takes and uh, opinions about the comic book market, uh, what's going on, and, and kind of like to future proof your collection and things that yeah. uh, you know we should all be thinking about as collectors, and, and you really hit on a lot of really awesome top of mind type of uh, topics and conversations on your YouTube channel, which you can find at Wahoo Comics. And uh, I've probably stolen a little bit of your thunder, but I was wondering if you wouldn't mind just kind of talking about uh, who you are as a comic book collector. Yeah, so I have been reading comics since I was a little kid, about 40 years ago now. And in the last three years or so, I went from being simply a reader to a collector slash investor, uh, like probably many people around my age, finally have a little more disposable income than I used to. So all these books that I've wanted for a while, I can start adding some of them to my collection. Uh, and so on my channel, I really love to talk about comic book finance and the market, and especially, like you said, thinking of the future and where yeah. it's headed and how we should prepare ourselves uh, financially. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so definitely check out the Wahoo Comics YouTube channel if you're interested in those topics. And uh, I, I think that you know part of my collecting journey is is thinking about uh, you know what is sort of what does the end game look at. We're, we're not at the end game yet, by the way. We we just started. Uh, didn't want to throw that out there too soon. But uh, you know just just being mindful mm -hmm. as we collect and we're on this collecting journey. And I've picked up a lot of really uh, interesting, thought provoking. Uh, topics. You've kept me up at night some nights with some of your videos. It's fun to buy comics and it's fun to collect and invest and get them graded, which we'll kind of get into with CGC unboxings and all of that. But we're also, I don't know, I, I hate to even talk about it, but there's a finite aspect, at least for me and my collecting journey. And I'm not there yet. I'm still accumulating yeah. and things like that. But uh, definitely check out uh, Wahoo Comics on YouTube and just start to go through the library. The other thing is a lot of your YouTube videos, they're still relevant. Like if you watch yep. something from a year ago, it's still relevant today. And I think that's something else that's kind of unique and interesting to your channel. Yeah, thanks. I really made that transition maybe a year and a half ago. You know, when I first started the channel, it was you know, just hauls and showing off what I got. But then I really decided to pivot. And, and as much as possible, you know, it's hard to always come up with a brand new idea. But I guess what some people would call evergreen videos, where, mm -hmm. right, you could watch it this year, or if you stumble upon my channel two years from now, the, the principles are still relevant for you whenever. Absolutely. One of the, the primary and fundamental principles of comic book collecting, you know, I have to ask you, this is the, I think, it's the most important question. It's the question um, that I ask all of my guests, and that is direct or newsstand. I will say from my personal collection, it's direct. I would rather have the extra art, you know, especially if you've got a nice little Todd McFarlane drawing in the bottom. If I'm looking to sell, I do like newsstands since they can demand a little bit of a premium on the market. But if you're asking me for my collection, give me a direct. That is correct. Uh, uh, great answer. Uh, love that. So it, it is something, yes, from a, a value and collectability. I get it. There are those times, but uh, to me, direct is where it's at. Love it. Uh, now, it, although that question is always controversial, uh, there is something that's happening right now or just recently happened. I did watch your video on this topic. And again, it was something else that you know I wanted to bring you on because I wanted to, to dive in a little bit on this giant size X-Men number one that got a 9.9 .9 and, and just just before um, we kind of dive in a little bit, just just if for some reason uh, you haven't seen this, uh, it was a dealer uh, affiliated with a comic book auction house that got his hands on the 9.9. .9. 
And I think that for me, I was more bothered by that than the book getting a 9.9. Mm. And uh, I wanted to get your take just in general about like the the odds of that happening, the, the age of the book. How did this one raw <laughs> sit around all this time and who had it? And how did it get from sitting around that pile of comics into this dealer's hands? I just feel like it, it's almost impossible. It was a miracle that it even happened. Yeah, uh, like you are alluding to, I think it's super sketchy. Uh, you know, I I want to give CGC the benefit of the doubt, and I'm not like all corporations are evil, but this is pretty concerning. Like you said, just from the odds alone, over 13,000 of these books have been submitted. And to believe that this one is the one that deserves a 9.9 is just hard to imagine. And doubling up on that, you know, something CGC now makes available are pictures of the books that are taken. And if you look at the picture, I mean, it's certainly a beautiful book but it has a clear color rub. And to say that 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 one is the one, it's just really hard for me to buy. And so what I think is going on, you know, CGC has been laying down hints that they're gonna start loosening their standards, uh, make nine nines more available. Uh, so I, th I think that's a clear indication that that's the direction that they are going and for a few different reasons. And a and second thing you mentioned that I didn't talk about in my video at all, but I've thought about making a video on this, is the auction houses. Do they get more favorable grading than you know, just the random collector like me? And man, again, I don't want to believe it. You know, I'm, not, I'm not like looking for conspiracies everywhere, but it also doesn't seem like a coincidence that the auction house is the one that got the nine nine giant size x-men one i wonder if uh they just the auction houses because it would made this made me think about the video game grading that uh where, where it was like the the heritage the grading company um uh, when they first decided that grading video games were going to be a thing there was uh i, I don't want to retell the documentary uh that came out because i thought that was insightful but what I took away from that and what this reminded me of is that I do feel like there's an element where these dealers and auction houses, I think they feel like they're bulletproof. And I feel like that's mm -hmm. what CGC is also thinking is, yeah, we can make a lot of mistakes. You know, we're still grading books. We're doing this. And it's almost like, uh, listen, like if if you're right and that a dealer is getting preferential treatment and, and CGC is complicit in this and they went through it, there's part of me that thinks they don't care. They're yeah. just going to do it anyway because they've gotten away with all of this other stuff. And I don't want to say gotten away like that we have evidence that there's been something that has been, you know, uh, some some underhanded scheme where or, or so, something illegal. I'm not implying that. But there have been mistakes that have been documented. And it doesn't seem to have hurt the reputation of everyone. And I was wondering what you thought about that in terms of this sort of like the immortal auction house and CGC and graded yeah. and, and, and like, do you feel that way as well? Yeah, I do. And again, you know, obviously the point of CGC and other grading companies is that they're a third party, right? That they're unbiased, but it's impossible. You know, it's impossible for them to be unbiased. They have profit incentives and they want to keep certain customers happier than others. And it's just natural to do that. It's it's a business. Yeah. Obviously, at some point, that does become you know ethically concerning. Uh, but you know th there is bias, and and anyone's grading. You know, this is what somebody mentioned in one of my most recent videos, talking about AI in twenty years maybe being able to scan books and grade. And and I think I actually hope that happens. I, I, you know, obviously, once the AI is developed enough, but. Yeah. There, there's just always going to be human bias and human error. It's just the same thing in Major League Baseball. I'm a big baseball fan. You know, the, the AI or, or computers, they're more accurate than human umpires. And yeah. so there, there's there's just bias uh, built into what's going on. And to your point, you know, CGC hasn't seen any hit to their company despite some of these recent scandals and issues. And I think something... 
people like you and me, at least me, might take for granted. We think the YouTube community represents the collecting community. And so there's some a handful of us that are here like, well, how could CGC do this? But I'm guessing 95% of collectors aren't watching our videos, aren't even aware of these things happening at CGC. And they're just happily going to the auction houses and getting their giant size X-Men 1 or whatever book that it might be. And so CGC has done some calculus and realized it's, oh, well, you know, we might upset Moneyball Comics and Wahoo Comics and some other you know, YouTubers, but mm -hmm. the vast majority of our customer base isn't you know, raising a fuss and we're going to be okay. Right. This happens every time, Michael. Uh, what is a big deal is that we have strayed from the, the main timeline where we've started branching off uh, on, on these very awesome, great topics, but we must get back on the sacred timeline. The sacred timeline. And get back to uh, some of uh, what we had talked about here, uh, kind of getting in and zooming in, I think, on some of these. And, and it's no secret, I think, that both of us do submit books to CGC. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you could maybe talk about when you, when you mentioned in the intro that I think you said it was about three years ago that you started yep. to move away from from just pure reader to collector slash investor. And could you talk to us a little bit about, you know, what made you first start submitting books to CGC right. uh, back at that time? Yeah. So probably like a lot of people, COVID had a big part of this. You know, I was at home from work more often. So I started watching through some videos and the YouTube algorithm found me and, and said, hey, here's some unboxing videos. Here's some investing videos. And so that stirred us some interest. And then the COVID relief came and I have seven children. And so all of a sudden I had an extra $2,000 a month to do something with. And I hadn't lost my job. And so I still had my regular income. So all of a sudden I had this extra disposable income and it certainly didn't all go to comics. But, you know, I did have some to say, all right, well, I've been watching these videos. Uh, let me maybe start experimenting in, you know, submit, you know, buying some higher end issues and submitting. And that's when I got started and, of course, loved it and have continued to love it. And has worked as hard as possible to you know, make the hobby fund itself, you know, buying and selling both. So I don't go crazy, especially now, of course, the COVID relief is no longer there. Uh, but that is the origin of my story in investing. Awesome. It, now, it, it, as part of that, as I, I was talking about, we're all on our own collecting journey. And I don't want to assume that maybe what happened with the Giant Size X-Men 9.9 uh, .9 has influenced you in some way. But I am curious, uh, you know, when you, when you talk about those, uh, I, some of the most uh, interesting and fun videos of yours that I watch is, is when you talk about like the thrill of CGC and, yeah. and the thrill of the unboxing and that excitement, because I get caught up in that as well. But has anything recently happened that is detracted from that? Or uh, uh, do you still find that process to be as thrilling as that first CGC submission? Yeah. So I still find it to be thrilling, though at the same time, I'm on a brief pause while CGC gets things figured out. Cause like, you know, if you're aware of the scandal, like I'm st still uncertain, are they gonna come out with a better case, you know, or with these 9.9s potentially? Well, yeah, do I wanna wait till their standards seem more settled? And so I'm on a little bit of a hiatus, though if I were submitting, I the, the excitement would still be there. And I think I'll, I'll first start getting back into submitting not like, uh, Bronze Age, Silver Age books that I'm not looking for the nine eight. Like I'm, I'm really hesitant submitting like high grade modern books or even high high grade Copper Age books because I'm worried that uh, even if I get a nine eight, which if you've seen some of my videos, those are the ones obviously I get oh, nine eight really excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what if that nine eight isn't that big of a deal a year from now? And so that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, you know, so there's so there's certainly been some water thrown on the fire. Uh, but I don't think that's going to last. I think once like there's a more clear picture of where we are and where we're headed in terms of the whole grading industry, then I'll I'll be ready to jump back on the wagon. Yeah, and and by jumping back on the wagon, I assume that it's not just submitting books to CGC, 
it's also creating some content around uh, CGC submissions and unboxings. And, and I am curious, do you record all of your unboxing videos or do you record some or like, what is that process like in terms of submitting versus content creation? Yeah. So I do, yeah, every book I get back from CGC, I do open, uh, you know, as part of a, a YouTube video that I put out. And I really enjoy doing that. You know, if, if you make content, you, know, you start feeling like you're part of a community, part of a team. And so I enjoy sharing those feelings with other people because it's genuine, you know, reactions, you know, like I'm not putting on, you know, the thrills or I'm not putting on the disappointments. Those are genuine emotions that I'm feeling at that time. And I really enjoy sharing those with others. So I think it builds some sense of, community and connection. And obviously, man, I know you're in California, I'm in Virginia. And so it's not like you and me are going to get together in LCS and, and talk about that. I'll be there. But, but still, in some way, even this is one of the things I love about YouTube, we're on completely different sides of the country, but we can still share something very personal and emotional through these unboxing videos. And so I really do enjoy doing those. And it does affect, yeah, there's some times where I have been on the edge of should I submit this or not? And if it's an, you know, if it's a well-known book, I'm like, well, yeah, yeah. People will love to see what this book would get. Now, I, I do have to ask you because this is something that um, uh, I, I struggle with and I made, I made a decision not to peak, uh, peak at the grades. Yeah. Um, do you see the grades before uh, sometimes, mm -hmm. all the time? No? Never, never. Because I, again, I want that genuine, emotional reaction to be captured, not just even for my viewers, but for myself. You know, sometimes I, I will enjoy going back and looking at those videos myself and just seeing how elated or disappointed I was depending on the grade. And so my wife is gracious enough to tape up all the grades before I, I take a look. And, and it's really hard. Okay. Certainly there's a couple where I've, I have been, I don't know if I can wait or like, or like, you know, because sometimes a lot, a lot of creators do this. I, I do that. I try to make a prediction and I'm afraid, man, I could look like an idiot. If I say, I think this is going to be like a nine, eight and it's like an eight, five, then I look like a complete moron. But so far I have resisted that. But that, that's when I'm most tempted where I'm like really uncertain and afraid I'll look like an idiot. Um, but still, I've always made the decision. I want the genuine reaction. Yeah, captured. All. So you have an assistant. That's, that's yeah, I do. Okay. I do. All right, because I uh, do you do you watch other unboxing videos? CGC, unboxing? I do. Okay, yeah. So, I, can you tell when they know the grade? I mean, obviously, if they're just like, "Here's the slab," you know, but but <laughs> right, like, right. I I I don't want to name names, but there are videos I watch where I'm like, "You know the grade already," and I was curious, like, if you watch those, like, what I'm trying to do is recapture or maybe even borrow some of the thrill. Like when I see you get right. excited or disappointed, I'm feeling it too. Yes, and I don't have, I mean, I have a lot of slabs, but they're not coming into the house daily. And so yep. watching YouTube videos helps me kind of get excited for that. And I, I was wondering, I, I may be a little nitpicky here, but if you know that the host knows the grades, is this a letdown like uh, for you yeah. at all? Does this, does this bother you? It's a complete letdown. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm personally not interested in watching the video. I mean, I might scrub through and just see the grades really quick. Yeah, 90% yeah, of the reason that I watch somebody else's unboxing is because, like you said, I want to live vicariously through them and share in this emotional experience. And I've, I've seen people comment on like Facebook groups and stuff like that, like how they hate unboxing videos because it's just people, you know, showing off and bragging and all that kind of stuff. And I, I, I'm sure some people can do that, but that's not how I feel because I feel yeah. like, again, there's some level of community you know, obviously we're in different states and all that, but, but there, there's, there is a real community and a real as friendship as you can get to be a virtual friendship. Yeah. That, that, that comes from the little, little time. And to me, it becomes like a sports team, the, especially the channels I follow, you know, like that, I, that I've, that I've watched, you know, repeatedly, like when I'm watching, you yeah, know, the, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I went to the university of Virginia. So that's my favorite, uh, you know, obviously sports team in college. When, when I'm watching a sporting event, like I'm living through the players and I'm having a genuine emotional reaction. You know, I'm not, I'm not shooting the ball or swinging the bat, but I still feel what they're feeling, at least to some level, of course. 
And so that's how unboxing videos are to me. It's like watching my favorite sports team. And so when I watch your videos, you know, I feel, I feel myself, I'm like, oh, come on, come on. Nine eight, you know, yeah. And then, yeah. And obviously yeah. you're going to be more excited when you get the nine eights than I would, but I, but I still feel like, oh, you home run. And, yeah. And that's I, what I, makes those videos fun for me. Exactly. I'm the same way. Uh, and it's a letdown for me too. Uh, I can always tell when the, cause I used to do this where I'm like, I used to have like this uh, grade reveal party with my family. <laughs> and I, I think I did it maybe twice. And I was like, they're not enjoying this at all. <laughs> and I, what I would do is I would take the CGC, um, when you click in to the order after you get yeah, the grades, yes. and then, and then you got a table of grades on, on the web page. What I would do is I would zoom in like, so that nine or not nine, eight, but like hopefully nine, eight, but like the, the title was taking up the entire, and I would do this on the TV. <laughs> so I had, I had my family watching on my big screen TV and it would say, you know, like house of myths, like a house of mystery wouldn't even fit in there. And then I'd scroll over and it would get the nine. I loved it. I thought it was great, but uh, they, you know, that, that the wore off after a couple. Um, and then when I realized I went to record it, I, I didn't have any emotions about it. Cause I was like, right. It's cool that I have it in my possession, but that was the book that I sent in. I'm just getting it back and I'm getting it in the case. Um, so yeah, th I'm with you. Like it really is. It's as if, you know, we were hanging out together and we got a CGC submission return and we're open it, we're checking it out and, and we're there together. And I, yeah, that's how I look at it too. It's really a way to share. Um, and, and it does, I, that's one of the things that I get paranoid about is does it come off as bragging? And I have to be mindful of that. And I, I have just realized, just go with it. Um, I yeah. know why I do it. And I am constantly searching YouTube for CGC unboxes and, and watching them. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you feel, though, that this uh, we, we talked about it from the collector's perspective and kind of the, mm -hmm. the thrill that we get out of it and the sharing. But for CGC itself, is this like good PR and marketing, these CGC unboxings, because these are happening just organically? Is this good for CGC or does it hurt them in any way? I personally, that's a really great question that I hadn't thought of until you asked me that one. But I personally think it does help. Because again, your unboxings generate excitement in me for CGC, right? And and then I, I you know, the most positive experiences I have with CGC are my own unboxings and other people's own unboxing. And so I, I certainly feel like anytime you can have a positive experience with something, then it's going to increase the likelihood that you get connected with it. Like... I, you know, if I had never even watched an unboxing video, I mean, I found out about CGC through watching YouTube video and then seeing how much fun everybody else was having and how much thrills that they were having. And that's when I was like, oh, I've got to, you know, jump on this bandwagon. You know, once again, I started getting a couple of nicer books. Yeah. Uh, now, this has been a lot of fun, but I do want to, uh, well, we don't have to go negative. Kind of going back to the 9.9s, 9.9 .9 pre-screen, uh, what, what's going to happen to 10.0? One of my biggest fears, and, and you've addressed this on your channel, but I, I was wondering if I could pick your brain a little bit further. Uh, one of my biggest fears is that there will be kind of a market downgrade. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if it's that like straightforward, meaning yeah. that 9.9s will now all be very common and uh, you know, we'll open up our pre-screens and, oh, I got 11 out of 12, 9.9. 9. <laughs> right. um, I mean, do you think that that would happen? I mean, that seems really extreme, but like, I was wondering if you could maybe talk about the the impact to 9.9s and maybe your predictions on kind of like, which, what would we expect to see maybe in six months or, or a couple of years from CGC in terms of, yeah. uh, of, of the access to the highest grade possible, which has always been 9.8 for us. But can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about maybe some of your predictions on that? Yeah, you know, it's obviously really hard to know exactly where this is going, which is why I'm on this hiatus. Uh, but I do think it's clear that 9.9s are going to become more common. The question is how much more common? And, and yeah. that's something like... Are nine nines literally going to become the nine eights? And every book that had been a nine eight is all of a sudden now a nine nine. I don't think that's the case. You know, I've, I've watched a couple of other 
people who I feel are pretty knowledgeable and yeah, maybe 25% of what nine eights are become nine nines. So yeah, yeah. A year from now, like, I think it's going to be a slow, it's not going to be all of a sudden next week. Yeah. This change happens. It's going to be over time that, you know, they adjust to this new standard, but I think, yeah, a year from now, two years from now, you'll have, again, I I don't know what the number is. I'll throw out the number 25%, but some certain percentage of numbers that once would have been nine eights, that are now all of a sudden nine nines, which I think will have a significant impact on the, the market of high end, yeah, high grade comic book. Yeah. I, I'm worried about that. I, I really am. I, I think that uh, we were talking about how maybe bulletproof CGC feels, but to me, this, you know, it, you're talking about like swapped out books and slabs and some of the other mistakes and things that they've gone through. If the tiers change, I think it's over. I, mm. I it's, it's my biggest fear is that as, as I look around on my wall and I see some of these 9.8s that are hanging up there, um, if I look at those and, and change the eight from a six, right. you know, it, it's not all that interesting a- anymore. And so I am fearful of it, but I am also looking at it kind of from a realistic standpoint, you know, like my family's livelihood does not depend on Mr. Sinister being a 9.8, <laughs> right? It's just, uh, yeah. I hope, or, or Mr. Sinister at all in general. It's this is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to, there's an yeah. investment aspect that that I I can't deny. That's part of uh, my content as well. But it, it's it's something that I think about because yeah, there's value right now as we speak in in these books being a nine eight. And if CGC has decided that your nine eights are not really mm-hmm. worth as much as they w- once were, I don't know. I I can see a lot of hobbyists who have taken the who have transitioned into really kind of looking at investment grades and things like that um, i think it it would really change the the hobby and the market and have such a negative impact more so i think than anything am i over reacting a little bit or or try you know I, i'm just scared honestly that that that, that you could be yeah. right that 25 percent um you know of my 9.8 uh pre-screens 25 percent will be 9.9s Yes, I'll be thrilled, but I'll, the 9.8s will look silly. Yeah, I know, man. It is so hard to know. And I'll say, you know, for me, and I, you know, I love talking about comic book finance. So the financial hit of my 9.8s all of a sudden basically becoming 9.6s, yeah, is a real bummer. But what's even more of a bummer for me is that you know, these are the, the pride, the, the sources of pride in my collection. You know, these books, we've talked about the emotional thrill that you have that all of a sudden these books that I had such an emotional reaction to, especially, yeah, there's a video where I got a Secret Wars 8, 9.8, and that book means a lot to me because it's the first comic I read as a kid. Like, that's like the centerpiece of my collection. And all of a sudden, if that's not really, you know, what a 9.8 is now, I mean, just beyond the financial hit, just emotionally, that's oh yeah devastating. But I think CGC's in between a rock and a hard place, uh, you know, when they're thinking about the long term, uh, because uh, there's another channel I watch, uh, Comic Book Investments. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, that channel, mm-hmm. uh, but he talks about this. And I think I'm going to make a video on this sometime. But, but ultimately, CGC is a failing business in the sense that there are only so many books out there to grade. Right. You know, eventually there won't be any more Avengers number ones to grade any more Fantastic Four, one script, whatever you know, book we want to say. And so they have to continue to reinvent themselves to keep submissions going. And that's part of the reason why they're even branching out into other markets, why now they're doing their own signature series verification. Yeah, there's all kinds of things that I think they're trying to factor in and figure out how they can get the most books submitted in the long term. And you know, one of the hard things, again, that's just, it's hard, it's hard for me to know here on YouTube, the, the percentage of us on YouTube, we had these really strong feelings, but does, does the average Joe who isn't really in this investment space, how much does he get frustrated about this? And so if yeah. CGC, obviously they've got smart people, I assume, it doesn't <laughs> seem smart, but I'm assuming they have smart people making the decisions. They've done, again, the math and said, Hey, you know, there's, there's these five percent of collectors that we're going to turn off that will never be with us. But yeah, but but this ninety five percent aren't going to care. 
And plus, you're going to bring in more people to replace those that left because now all of a sudden you get nine nines. I assume they've done that math. But the big question is, which have they done that math right? You, know, you can't predict the future. You know, maybe they uh, underestimate how many of us, you know, to your point, really do get angry about this and are, I'm, I'm done. Because it will certainly affect uh, my, again, my submission of high grade books. Like I, I'm not so concerned about, you know, my six fives, you know, silver age books all of a sudden, you know, being very different. I, th I think those yeah. will stay close to the same. But uh, certainly my uh, submitting of high grade book will go down if this indeed does become. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, there's there's nuances in the nines that that's it's hard for me to understand, like how a book would get a nine nine, but not a nine eight. And now the nine eight becomes a nine six when some of my nine eights in a slab look like nine twos. You know, it's it, you know, it, it it's very subjective in the nines. And I think that's why I'm yeah. so concerned about it is that just to kind of make a blanket statement and potentially push down the tiers. Uh, again, we're talking about fine details. Uh, hair, yep. I call them like hairline ticks, like the, these things that you need equipment to see. Yeah. Uh, especially on the, on the, the high end books, uh, the grails and so forth. I don't know. I'm, I'm just concerned, but I, I think I need to table that concern. One thing that would help me uh, feel better is if you could show me yours sure yeah yeah so and, and by, and, oh sorry and, and i but go ahead, go ahead. I, I meant your your uh if you have a comic book that you would want to share oh uh, oh oh yeah. sorry i was yeah oh, sorry. Got, no, I saw, all right I uh, yeah, yeah that's what that's what i thought you meant that's what yeah, i thought yeah. you meant yeah uh, no but, confusion yeah, do here you have a comic that uh, maybe it kind of holds a special place in your collection yes so uh, you know about two and a half years ago i lived the dream of every collector. So right when I was getting back into, or starting again, investing for the first time, you know, I was talking to it and started making YouTube videos, talking about it to my in-laws. And my father-in-law said, hey, well, you know, I have a bunch of comics from when I was a kid back in the 70s, and you can just have them and they're just in my basement. And so I never even knew that he had these comics. And so I went down there and saw, holy cow, there are thousands of comics and there could be some pretty big keys. And so all of a sudden I get to the box of Incredible Hulks and my heart is pounding and I'm counting down. Here's issue 185, 184, 183, 182. And then my all time Bronze Age Grail. First appearance, obviously, of Wolverine, Incredible Hulk 181. And he also had 180, if you think that's the first appearance of Wolverine in there, which actually got a better grade. I sent them both off for grading. The 180 is a 7.5. But this is the book that I that I love uh, with Wolverine on the cover. And, yeah, just literally knowing, oh, shoot, I'm going through this. Is it going to be there? Talking about emotional moments. That was emotional. And then when I when I picked it up, my my hands were shaking and – I was afraid of damaging it and obviously just, just an incredible experience. And then, of course, having this from my father-in-law, just the family connection of that. And so it's a book that, you know, unless things got really bad yeah, and I was desperate to feed my family, this book would never leave my collection and I will plan on passing it down to my children. For, so they have a connection both with me, but also, of course, their grandfather. Oh, what a great story. And uh, it's so awesome. It, it, again, the, going back to what I was saying at the beginning, um, I love seeing books like that in hands of collectors like you. That's what comic book collecting is, is about. I, I don't want to see dealers that maybe have these connections and stuff like that. Like yeah. uh, your your sort of organic story and collecting and finding books, uh, finding them in the wild and all of that. I love it. So very cool. I'm glad you have that. And I, I think that the only thing that we can do now is uh, prepare you for the next phase, which is rapid fire. And so I uh, just want right. to make sure you're sitting down and, and you're ready for this. Let me, let me put the book down. All right, I'm ready. Okay. Four. Just want to make sure you're ready. Um, so uh, here we go. Uh, and, and I think this is a very timely, um, just added Wolverine's first appearance. Oh. <laughs> Hulk uh, 180 or Hulk 181. As much as I love 181, and that's my favorite, it's really 180. Yeah. It
but it's it, yeah it's can 181 still is hulk 181 even yes, if it's right first full first cover but yeah he appears yeah, personally i i care more for my personal collection i care more about first cover appearances than i do mm-hmm. first appearances especially if you're talking about books that i'm getting slabbed you know like some random character yeah the yeah book with a random character on it i don't care i want their first cover appearance yeah uh Giant size X Men number one or Hulk one eighty one? Definitely for me, Hulk one eighty one. Even though it's not Wolverine's first appearance, I am Wolverine is just my favorite character, and so even though Giant size X Men obviously has awesome character, it's still yeah. Hulk one eighty one. All right, I'm I'm gonna ask you again once we see that Hulk one eighty one and a nine point nine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, CGC or CBCS? It's still CGC just because they the, the market's determined it that way. If CBCS ever gets respect on the market like CGC, then I would consider that, but that, not at this time. Now, for your unboxing videos, you did reveal, I think this is an exclusive for, for, the, uh, for the top 30 for this channel, that you have an assistant with your unboxing. Yes. And, and, and in order to have a proper unboxing, you have to cover the grade. So... Uh, square post-it notes, star post-it notes, or painter's tape? Painter's tape, 100%. Painter's tape for everything with comics. When I'm yes. shipping off comics, painter's tape. Just have one roll of painter's tape, and it covers all your collecting needs. Yep. And because I just can't get enough, 9.8 or 9.9? 9.8. I never want to see a 9.9 in my life. Yep. Yeah, I, I agree. All right. Uh, now we're setting you up here. Uh, Virginia or Virginia <laughs> Tech? <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. UVA, Virginia. All right. Now, this one I'm curious about. Maryland or Ooh. North Carolina? It's a pr- 100% North Carolina. Because actually, my I, so I was born and raised in Virginia, and my dream school was actually to go to University of North Carolina. I drew, grew up a Tar Heels basketball fan, and so I'm going to go for that reason. And I got a Navy scholarship to go there. And if you don't know how ROTC scholarships work, they pay your way through and then you get, uh, yeah, th- then you serve for four years, but I failed my eye exam. And so they wow. took away the scholarship. And so that's why I ended up at UVA, which obviously now I'm very happy about, yeah. but certainly North Carolina has. Oh, I'm sorry. That is incorrect. Uh, I, I, was born, <laughs> I was born, uh, in Maryland. Uh, Oof. There's a, well, who know who knew that I, I moved when I was young, so it's all good. And then lastly, I need to know the Wahoo or oh. the rock. Yeah, the Wahoo is going to lay the smack down on the rock. Of course, it's the Wahoo. Yeah, I feel like this is this is some new character personality that you've developed yeah. for your channel. So I hope to see more of the Wahoo on. Uh, okay, Wahoo that's good Wahoo. to hear. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have, to I'll have to talk to him, bring him back. Uh, and Michael, uh, we're out of time. Uh, so right. we have reached that point. We are in the end game officially now. We're in the end game now. And I just want to say what a thrill. Uh, I thought CGC unboxings were thrilling. Having you on uh, as a guest has been a personal thrill of mine. I have uh, really thoroughly enjoyed your channel, but really more so the effort that you put into uh, kind of creating topics and talking about them in detail. It's really just kind of a unique space in sort of this online comic book collecting community uh, that we have. But uh, it's it's been a pleasure. I would hope that you would consider coming back on and we can dive into some Love of those, those alternate timeline branches that we, we kind of got into. Uh, but uh, maybe just in parting, could you uh, tell some folks that uh, want to find your channel or your social media presence where they could find you? Yeah, so my YouTube channel name is Wahoo Comics, and that's the easiest way to find me. My IG, Instagram is also Wahoo Comics, so pretty easy to find me there if you want to shoot me like a direct message or something like that. But I'm not very active on that other than just using the message function. I don't post a lot there. Uh, so if you're interested in my content, the YouTube channel. Awesome. Yeah. And I love that 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I think you were giving away, it was like a Hulk 181 6.5. Uh, yeah. Very, yeah. Very cool of you to do so that. So no one subscribe. Just for 1,000 subs. I mean, not even 10,000. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Generous guy. Clearly, that's not true. Uh, but yes, you're you're closing in on a thousand. I hope you get there yeah. soon. Should be well Thank deserved. You. But uh, really appreciate your time and being on the show. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, I had a great time. Thanks for having me, and look forward to the next one.
And there he was, Michael from Wahoo Comics. Uh, like I mentioned, a lot of thought-provoking comic book-related content. Uh, check him out at Wahoo Comics on both YouTube and Instagram. If you want to find out who this the Wahoo character is, uh, definitely go watch his uh, more recent video. Check him out there. Thanks for watching. Happy collecting. And see you next time.